the Anfield Rap Daily video. <laughs> this is it. This is as real as it gets. I am John Gibbons. This is Gareth Roberts. We're going to talk to you about everything that's going on. Um, I think we should probably start with the thing that everyone on Twitter seems to be talking about anyway, which is this thing that's come overnight, which is John Henry chatting in America about the uh, did he stand and Given the clearest indication, yeah, I guess you'd say that it probably won't happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah, a um, bit of a mad one. I mean, it comes on the back of as well. Um, Ian Air did an interview, didn't he, with the FC business? Yep. And uh, so it's uh, talking along a similar vein, really, just about how basically being non committal. I mean, that's always been the case. It's only yep. ever been outline planning permission for what the, what the, you know, for the Anfield Road. And, it, and, it, and I remember quite some time ago writing a piece around it saying, you know, if you actually went on the website and everything, if you had a bit of a dig round, everything that you found came back saying didn't really sound like it was going to happen. And he, yeah, he's sort of reiterated that overnight, really made it clear and in saying, you know, with, with there being an issue, he called it over ticket prices, i.e. they can't charge what they want, uh, that that the Anfield Road may now never happen. And um, I mean, I think it's important to say that the plan is for 4,800 extra seats with no corporate facilities. Yeah. And and I think what sort of... There's various comments flying around about FSG, and uh, as you would expect. Um, what sort of jumps out at me is, like, you know, the way the the way the main stand's being funded is obviously a loan from FSG to the club. The club get the work done, and then slowly over time, they pay this loan back to FSG. Um, obviously, some of the corporate facility and uh, the new main stand's an absolute fortune. Um, per season and, and what have you so they're going to get that money back quicker because uh, that's not the case in the Annie Road they haven't got that corporate offer and you can only basically charge general admission prices it would take a long time to pay back the loan so the the little thing in my mind is another little pointer perhaps that they're, they're not in it for a, a long long time they're, they're thinking yeah. somewhere along yeah, the wanted, way of, of a way out. They wanted to pay back very quickly. You know, the, 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 the time scale I've seen for the main stand has been as low as five years. Where do you think would it be able to pay it back that quickly? I'm not sure whether that quite will happen because it doesn't look to me like the, the, the main stand corporate has sold quite as well as they would have liked. No, There's it's a not lot full, of, is it? A lot of gaps uh, in the last game, which is obviously a shame. So I don't know whether it's going to be quite as successful as they hoped. I don't know whether that's going to knock on effect with the Annie Road. Maybe it has. If it has, I'd rather they were honest about it mm. rather than what they've what John Henry's done in this interview, which is basically blame the fact that they can't charge whatever they want. Yeah, it, it seems a bit... That's why I don't like that either. It almost sort of... And, it, and it, I've seen it already. On I've just looked on social media earlier and I've seen it already that that's, that draws a line through supporters again. It's almost... You know, you can say it's a throwaway comment or whatever, but this is a very successful businessman, a very intelligent man. Yeah, it's a politician's I, move, I, isn't it? And I'm sure he thinks about every word that he puts out into public. Um, and what he's done here, I think, is, is driven a little bit of a wedge between fans here because you've gone, you've now got the argument again about the ticket price uh, protest, about the 77th minute walkout. I've seen people having a go at Spiritus Shankly yeah. for the work they do all of a sudden again. And that's all because of this comment, this one comment. So I don't really know what he wants to get out of that. It, 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 as you say, a bit of a politician thing. It's almost, well, we were going to do it, but you did that, so we're not now. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I'd quite like them to build the stand regardless. I mean, you know, almost, and I'm sure everyone will, will hit me with all the usual business, profit and loss, supply and demand, all that usual stuff. I'm less interested in the business side of football. I'm a football fan, and I'd like Anfield to be a big ground, one we can be proud of, one full of Reds who want to go to the game. There's still a huge season ticket waiting list. It'd be nice if that was got down by being able to offer 5,000 more seats to Liverpool fans, which is what that, that stand would provide. And as well, it would bump up the attendances, it would make the ground bigger. And, you know, it's something to be proud of. It is. It might, it might sound silly, but I think, you know, you do look at what, what other clubs have got and you go... Well, West Ham have got a bigger ground yeah, than us, though. Yeah, exactly. And you look at that and you think, well, we're Liverpool. Why haven't we got a big ground? We can fill it. There's twenty odd thousand still on the on the season ticket waiting list, and they've closed that list now. I mean, as much as I'd like to put my son on the season ticket waiting list, I can't because they closed it. They closed it some time ago. So, and, and then you've got the, all the people who are members as well who have a sort of I don't know if you know what it is one in six, one in seven chance of of getting a ticket. You know, would be nice if we could offer up some more seats and make it easier for those people as well. 
And there's a video going around at the moment as well. Um, I've just I've just threw it up on our Facebook page actually uh, from Eurosport, and it's nothing new. You've seen it all before, but it's comparing our English football and, in, and owners in English football treat fans compared to in Germany. And I just don't I, I just don't understand every time I see it as why can't we work this out in the UK? Why can't we work it out? There's loads of money sloshing around. There's loads of money coming in from TV. The, the fans who go to the game are a vital part of it. They provide the backdrop. You can go on all day about watching on telly, and that's great. And, and I understand that some people can't get to games, distance, life, money, all that. But those people at the ground make the game almost as much as the players for me, because otherwise it's a bunch of fellas playing on a park with no sound effects around it and no passion and no atmosphere. So, you know... I mean, what was mad, I thought as well, John, in, in, in those comments he made, is that almost the next question he's talking about Jürgen Klopp. Yeah. And, he, and he says, oh, yeah. you know, Jürgen Klopp, the reason why Jürgen Klopp's brilliant for Liverpool is he suits the culture of Liverpool. He suits the culture among supporters. He does, and he's right. But this is another cultural aspect of supporters. We want to go to the game, we want to fill the ground, we want to make the noise. You know, so almost do your bit here, John, and don't start, you know... Pointing fingers yeah, at they're, us. They're quick to sell the kind of the, the, the atmosphere and the special nature, but then when it has to nurture it, it's like, well, you know, we need to, you know, we need to make as much money as possible. And and it's another thing that, that annoys me about the distance. You know, he's over there talking about the stadium. Well, maybe if he was here more, he'd realise that the atmosphere has been far better the first two games yeah. just by having people in the ground who aren't used to going, you know, I think it did get a bit stale at Anfield, and part of the problem was it was the same people every week, you know, but now there's, there's, there's not just extra people in the ground, but it's more people who, who maybe were struggling for tickets, and now suddenly they got mm. a season ticket, and they're like, oh, brilliant, yeah, I'm going to make loads of noise, and so, I mean, they, they were here the first game, so you'd have thought they were the here, but maybe they, because they haven't been enough, they haven't realised the kind of difference, really, and, and the fact that it continued against Hull, it was a good atmosphere, and the fact that, you know, that they're talking about Jürgen Klopp, well, Jürgen Klopp's spoken about, about the ground at Anfield and how, how we can make a difference and things like that, and there doesn't seem to be a connector between the club saying, oh, isn't that a boss line by Jürgen, to actually listening to what he's saying and, and, and taking it on board and thinking of it as something that we can nurture and... Oh, well, well, one an extra 5,000 people who are in the Anfield Road who are maybe the kind of people who will be making noise and things like that. You know, maybe that'll help the football club, maybe that'll push us on, mm -hmm. maybe that's something that makes a difference when it's 89th minute. It's, and a it's a statement as well, it's a statement. You know, it's a statement that Liverpool, Liverpool can do that, Liverpool can make their ground better and get more fans in because we're a big club, because this is what we do. You know, and, and like, I know they want sponsors and I know they want to name stands and things like that. But surely all this helps, you know what I mean? If you've got a bigger ground and you're being ambitious and you're showing that ambition by by committing to projects like that, that seems to me like something Liverpool should be doing. I mean, the other aspect of this as well is the communication issue. Like you say, he's chosen to make these comments on the other side of the world. Um, he knows what he's doing. He knows what's coming out of his mouth. Um, I, I'm a bit disappointed that it's always it always seems to be that way. Like, why can't... John, why can't you sit down, meet with someone this side and, and answer some questions that we'd like answered, you know, rather than just sort of picking and choosing your moments, throwing out a little, you know, grenade that, that then explodes in the Liverpool world and then going back into your Boston bubble. I mean, you know, sit down with the Echo, sit down and have an awkward interview and instead of a nice one with LFC TV, you know what I mean? Answer some questions. Because you remember, you go back to when they took over the club, they were all about how open they were, yeah, yeah. How, how they wanted to communicate with fans, they set up this supporters committee which... Well they committed, in the supporters committee, sorry to interrupt you, they committed to doing one a year. That's right. Um, there's four a year meetings with the supporters committee, they committed, they committed themselves to one a year, they didn't have to, and I don't think they've been to any. Yeah. In the, in the two, three years it's been going. Yeah, I mean, and you know, you remember the, the, the he met little select groups of fans and things like that. He was pictured with an armful of books under his arm where he talked about wanting to learn about Liverpool and the culture of Liverpool and all that. And it almost seems as time's gone on, got, you know, almost, it feels to me, as a fan, grown a little bit tired of it. N not not as interested as they once were. Um, find, you know, finding it difficult, realise how hard it is. I don't know. I don't know the reasons because I can't ask him and he doesn't answer these type of questions. And this is my point. You know, again, someone that level with that amount of money involved in that amount of business is more than aware of the power of communication. He was quick to turn to Twitter and make little comments about, you know, what are they smoking at the Emirates and all that. And we all, we all lapped it up and loved it. 
you know, things like this, though, it'll just go quiet. And and people say to, I mean, we're only we're only a little small operation. We're fans who go to the game. We have asked. People always go, why don't you ask? We've asked. We've asked loads of times. Emails have gone backwards and forwards. He did do a, a, a written Q and A with us in 2012 about ticket prices and about stadiums and stuff like that. Some of those quotes now look very interesting, actually, in light of what he's just said. Um, but you know, here we are in 2016. You know. Perhaps it's time to sit down again, John, and have a chat with someone. Perhaps it's, you know, tell us where you are. Tell us what, you know, you want from Liverpool because there's all these little rumours that have gone round, you know, China and all the rest of it keep cropping up and, and it keeps getting battered away saying, well, we're looking for some investment, but just not total investment. A lot of it doesn't seem to add up and it'd be nice to know where we are. We'll leave it there, I think. There's other stuff going on. There's a press conference at half two. We're playing Swansea on Saturday. Yeah, he's doing a press conference at half two, so have a look out for that. And... Um... Yeah, I think that'll do us. Cheers up to us.